God's word for our meditation comes from our gospel reading. I'll reread a couple verses for us again. Jesus says, As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And later on, Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. This is God's word. Cause and effect is a principle that we learn from a very young age because it's something that happens all over the place in our lives. It's a principle that maybe we learn especially from experience, but I remember learning about it in grade school where we would have these sentences and we would have to find out what the cause is and what the effect is in any given situation because it pops up all over the place. And often, we look at the cause, or we look at the effect first, in order that we may find what the cause is, because the effect is what we live with. It is the situation that we're in, and we try to find the cause from there. So with spring right around the corner, hopefully, we might experience basement flooding. That would be the effect. What causes basement flooding? Warmer weather rain, and melting snow. Those are the causes for the effect of having water in your basement in the spring. Someone may have been a lifelong smoker and they go to the doctor for a routine checkup and the doctor says, you have lung cancer. That's the effect. And then the doctor says, it was most likely caused by your smoking. Cause, effect. Or maybe on a happier note, you woke up one day and you were just in a great mood the entire day. That's the effect. What was the cause? Maybe you got the best night of sleep you ever had and you felt great all day. Maybe you woke up to yet another snow day. Maybe your kids behaved all day and you didn't have to reprimand them once. Or maybe you woke up to your favorite breakfast prepared for you by your spouse. Anything can put you in a good mood if you set off on the, on the right foot all day. We constantly see cause, effect in our lives. Some people may refer to this phenomenon as karma. The idea that if we do something, it affects what happens to us in the future. If we do something good, good will happen to us. If we do something bad, then bad will happen to us. But this idea of cause and effect did not originate in modern America. The idea of karma did not originate with Hinduism, but rather this was a thought process that happened even in early biblical times. We see the disciples ask, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Even in ancient Judaism, there was a thought of connecting suffering and pain to a particular sin that was committed. Because surely God would never punish an innocent person with blindness or some other malady like that. He must have done something wrong. Maybe the man didn't obey the law as he should have. Maybe he brought too many impure sacrifices to the temple and God punished him with blindness. But John says that he was born blind. Well, surely an innocent baby in the womb wouldn't have committed an egregious sin to deserve being blind. So maybe the parents did something. Maybe they conceived of him outside of marriage and God punished them with a blind baby. But Jesus says, neither this man nor his parents sinned. There was no cause for the effect that happened to this man. And obviously Jesus didn't mean that this man and his parents were perfect human beings, but the idea of a particular sin causing this blindness was out of the question. We know that no doubt blindness is a result of our fallen sinful nature, but this was not a punishment from God for something that this man or his parents did wrong. Instead, Jesus says, it was an opportunity. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. A man who was blind from birth was sitting in a place right where Jesus would walk past and see him 
and heal his blindness, that was not a coincidence. Jesus healed this man on the Sabbath, knowing that the Pharisees would find out and raise a huge stink about it. That was also not a coincidence. Jesus then found the man after he was interrogated by the Pharisees, after he physically healed his blindness, to then heal his spiritual blindness. That was also not a coincidence. This whole chapter of John, all 41 verses of it, is dedicated to one miracle that proves a big point. Those who have spiritual sight on this earth or who think they do will remain blind in their sin, but those who are blind spiritually will receive sight from God. And Jesus used this physical malady in this man to show this spiritual malady that is far more serious because this spiritual malady does not only affect us here on this earth, but it affects us for all of eternity. The Pharisees were in danger of this affecting them for eternity because they thought they could see. They thought they did not need any spiritual help. They had it all figured out themselves. And we see John point out just how wrong they were. When they interrogated this man who is now able to see, their first gripe was that this happened on the Sabbath. Never mind that someone can now see, and that's a miracle. They thought someone broke the law of Moses, so that's bad. Someone did this on the Sabbath, so that's wrong. They didn't realize how spiritually blind they were, how much help they needed. Because what is the purpose of the law? Is it to give us the confidence to think we can see ourselves? Or is it to show us how blind we are and how much help we need? Up to this point, the now seeing man had no idea who healed him, but he knew that he must have been a prophet from God. Because no one who wasn't from God could have done such an amazing thing for him. And his faith in the one who opened his eyes gave him spiritual sight. Jesus didn't just heal him on the spot and his eyes were open, but he had to trust with that mud on his eyes that if he went to that pool, he would come back seeing. And that trust worked in his heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't need to see Jesus face to face to know that he needed that Savior who did what he did to him. But he knew what Jesus did to his heart. Jesus gave him sight in two different ways to show the power of God. And what an incredible witness this man must have been the rest of his life. Surely people would have known him as the blind man who sat begging his whole life And now he's this walking, seeing representation of the power that God has both over physical blindness and spiritual blindness. But how often do maybe we work like the disciples did at the beginning of this reading? Looking for cause and effect when bad things happen in our lives, when bad things happen on this earth. Maybe a family member dies too soon in our eyes. Maybe a tragedy happens in the family, a tragedy happens in the country, or maybe this minor inconvenience stops our plans dead in their tracks, and we think to ourselves, what did I do that would have caused this? What did I, a believer and a good person, do that made this happen? Who sinned that this hardship has come into my life? And when we find ourselves asking those questions, when they come up, and they will, we need to look no further than our Savior's response. This happened so that the works of God might be displayed in you. Sure, maybe you are not miraculously healed from your condition or your disease that you live with every day that affects everything that you do. Maybe your loved one is not brought back from the dead in a miraculous way. Jesus didn't need to heal this man's physical blindness to show him the spiritual blindness that affected his heart. 
He didn't need to prove a point to the Pharisees by physically healing this man that they were so blind they had no idea how blind they actually were. And that he was the Messiah long promised from the words of Isaiah who was going to bring, blind, or bring sight to those who are spiritually blind. The works of God are not often outwardly displayed in you and I, but they are displayed in our hearts. The effect of your spiritual sight was caused by your Savior's power over sin and over us who were blind from birth. And that is the real miracle that lasts for all of eternity. We have been given sight when we were blind in our sin from birth. But let's be clear, God is not the author of sin and pain and suffering. He does not punish you on this earth for something wrong that you did. Every bad thing, every sinful thing that happens to us is a result of sin, of our fallen nature. But every good thing we receive comes from God. But often we see our God use those sinful, bad things that happen to us in order to show his power in us. And that doesn't mean that those bad things are just going to go away. That doesn't mean things are going to be better for us here on this earth while we're still here. That's not the point. But the point is that we look to Christ in our blindness of sin and suffering, and we receive spiritual sight that gives us the light of Christ, that gives us that sight to all of eternity. And then we have that knowledge that we will be in heaven someday and we will be rid of every sinful malady that affects us here on this earth physically. So whatever you are living with that makes you not want to get out of bed in the morning or what saps the life out of you as you live, that will be gone someday in heaven. Like a kid on Christmas who can see the presents and is just waiting to rip them open. It's not a matter of if they're receiving the presents, it's a matter of when. And for the sin that affects us here on this earth physically, it's not a matter of if it's going to go away. It's a matter of when we get to heaven, it will be gone for all of eternity. And that's the confidence we have with the sight that our Savior has given us. That you can be full of pain and suffering here on this earth outwardly, but in your heart you have a strength that makes people question why you have it. And you can just tell them that I have been saved from the spiritual blindness that affects me from all of eternity. And that sight lasts you eternally. So thanks be to God that he displays his power in sinful humans such as you and I so that we can better reflect the light of Christ to a blind world that needs to see. Amen.